Hey everyone, it's uh, Adam here from View and Spew Review, of course. Uh, wanted to tell you about this episode before uh, it started rolling. Uh, we recorded this back on October 2nd, 2019. Uh, the reason why it has not been released until now is uh, this was with the new setup and I had a cable plugged in that was uh, doing uh, some uh, audio ground humming. Uh, and so I, I basically put it aside and didn't touch it until I had some time now to uh, take a look at it and see if I could remove the hum. So I was successful in removing probably 90, 95% of it overall. It was very loud, but uh, the, the effect of that is the talking audio kind of sounds like we're in a tin can because you have to sweep out certain uh, frequencies and uh, that'll affect the overall audio quality. In enjoy the episode. So this is a lost episode uh, that you are getting uh, this time so enjoy y'all better tune in and watch the trailer park of terror uh but this time we watched trailer park of terror yes yes yeah which was chosen out of the hat by uh sean mclaughlin mm -hmm. i was nervous at first i saw i saw the disc and i thought it might have been one of those compilation mm. uh collections that yeah. we, we got uh, Suburban Sasquatch and Old Man from. But no. Uh, lo and behold, this is a commercially released movie from 2008. Summit. A summit release. Yeah. Summit release. Yeah. Um, which I guess is based on comic book series. Yeah, or or maybe a, a individual graphic novel, I guess. I mean, I don't know. I think I don't, it's I a series. Um, just from when I was looking, there was definitely individual... Uh, issues okay um and it looks kind of like a tales from the crypt ish kind of thing like that <laughs> where it appears like that their your crypt keeper-esque character is that main character woman norma. I don't know her, yeah norma, norma is that her name yeah yeah so it seems like she's kind of like the crypt keeper and so i think that was an interesting choice of them to not make this into an anthology uh, but I kind of liked it that way. Um, it was almost yeah. like an anthology within the film, even though it really wasn't. The uh, The way that they set up the story and gave you backstory, I thought was really intelligent. Yeah. Because they could have just said, well, uh, or just showed us everything that happened in the 70s with this woman getting revenge on everyone in the mm -hmm. trailer park that took a deal with the devil type thing. Um traded her souls and their souls that was a little bit that i still couldn't really wrap my head like the purpose of all of that yeah it was um, a little muddy other than one of those things of you know you stepped into the wrong area at the wrong time because you know this this town is known or that little trailer park is known for you know the missing truckers and everything right. you know 30 right. years right. the, the flashes of the newspaper but the way that yeah. it was it was presented i thought was really clever and it's not really necessarily something that's done very well in other films of the same type mm -hmm. either it's going to be very straightforward which the concept of this was very straightforward and easy to understand you're, you're looking at you know the hills have eyes you're thinking of you know wrong turn you're thinking of house of a thousand corpses Rest sure. up. you know there's there's yeah. nothing original to it except the way that i thought that they presented it well and i do think that there was a sense of humor about it that films of that era were missing largely that's why you know i said like very early on it's like this very much seems like it comes from a rob zombie uh school of filmmaking and i think that's that's a good comparison um but yeah i ended up really kind of enjoying it you know yeah. for what it was yeah I, I did as well i mean i think that the rob zombie comparison is apt i mean you because you can clearly draw a line to like house of a thousand corpses from this yeah uh which was Five or six years before, uh -huh. maybe. Um, I think it's better than House of a Thousand Corpses, uh, I mean, if yeah. we're being honest. Yeah. Uh, there's definitely a sense of humor to this movie. Oh, yeah. Even even that movie sort of lacked. Mm -hmm. And that movie tried to put humor into it with Captain Spaulding character. Right, right. Yeah, no, I definitely agree with you on that. Um, I There was a lot of great one-liners in this movie. Mm -hmm. You know, there's like... And it... 
even though it was, yeah, it was icky, gross, I don't feel it went too, too far in that direction. Well, we watched the unrated cut. Right. Uh, and and I, it's one of the things I actually wanted to bring up. I think that, I don't know, maybe I'm getting softer as I go a little older. Uh, <laughs> I mean, I'm not. I'm certainly not offended by gore uh-huh. and, and, and extreme, extreme circumstances. Seen plenty of them. But I think it kind of goes against the sense of humor. Right, right. And, and I think that if they cut it back, which probably is cut back considerably in the, the regular cut of the film, I think it might even play better. Yeah, I think you might be right. Because it is definitely something where I think that that aspect of it is it would stop me from watching this movie a lot. You know, yeah. like, and everybody's different. You know, I like I'm all I'm a big fan of gore, I like bring on the gore, but when you're like skinning a guy and feeding his skin to him and then like deep frying him and stuff like right. that. Like, you know, I guess like it's, it's okay. It's just for me, it's like, I don't want to watch that kind of stuff all the time. There's a certain level of gore that I'm like, yeah, bring it on. I mean, evil dead too. <laughs> sure. Like when it's like buckets of blood, that kind of like over the top fun kind of thing. I got no problem with that kind of stuff. You know, I'm like, yeah, bring that stuff on. But yeah, when it gets a little bit too into that, torture porn aspect mm-hmm. that's where it does it does kind of bother me it all looked bit. really good uh-huh the skin yeah, and i was like going just was, like yeah. oh geez it's pretty sorry i'm yeah. a little bit under the weather weather <laughs> um it, it's pretty pretty well done the special yeah. effects in this movie yeah, yeah for the budget that they clearly had mm-hmm. the gore effects the, the were gore done effects well were incredible yeah. yeah absolutely but it was a lot of directorial choices that i liked as well uh, we talked about, you know, we were joking because there's some clearly CGI parts of, like, vehicles driving in the rain. So good. Yeah. So good. Yeah. There, There's there's a point where there's, like, this overhead shot of the van that our protagonists are on. Short bus. Uh, short bus, yeah. Right. Driving through, and you see, like, a, a turn off, and, and it's going... It's entirely CGI. And CGI in that ps2 era video game way right it's like it's obvious that it's yeah it looked like well like i said it looked like the the earlier grand theft autos when Mm -hmm. you're looking like above and you're driving your cars through the streets and during that scene because that's where they get lost Uh or or get into an accident and end up at this trailer outside this trailer park there's this uh female vocalist singer going on in the background that's absolutely a uh dime store version of evanescence which oh, right. just yeah. really just nails the yeah. era that this movie was made yeah, yeah, right definitely. To, to a t and i and i it enhanced my enjoyment of the movie just that sequence yeah you know it d- d- dated the movie yeah 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 very much um what that 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 shot actually reminded me of a lot was almost exactly like a shot in a in a uh, David Fincher's Zodiac, mm-hmm. you know, there's a shot with the the yeah, cab, the tracking shot. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And and it it very much reminded me of that kind of thing. Yeah, that op- straight overhead, and it was so stylized. That's what I like because when you're gonna make something that's like obviously CGI, don't try to make it look realistic because then it's just gonna look really bad. Right. Um, but like by doing something, it's like, look, this is a shot that we would have never been able to get with a budget. I mean, even David Fincher had to go CGI with that mm-hmm. shot. Yeah, this you is know? this is what two thousand and eight. Yeah. So I mean, it's before drones. You know that anybody, can, you know, Neil Breen can do it now. Sure. You know. Right. Yeah. Exactly. So yeah, I, I think that was good. There was definitely a style which, in looking at it, I thought I was I was definitely cracking up a lot because the. Uh, the guy directed this seems like his most of his uh cinematic history was directing shania twain videos hmm. like a whole lot of shania twain videos looks like as yeah. far as i can tell he directed every single shania twain video and so he knows to how this. to linger on a female body yeah and, yeah yeah and he shows that in this movie as well right but this definitely does have that kind of music video feel to it mm-hmm. but like a country music video, which I felt was yeah. a really fascinating look, something we don't actually see a whole lot of. Well, it's also something that we we have seen a whole lot of, which is the songs actually narrating what's going on <laughs> yeah. in the movie. Right, I mean, right. We, we've had a few of that with either post credit sequences. Yeah, I, I really films that we've done totally. You're absolutely right. I thought that that was that actually got a big chuckle out of me when it's like you know she in the very beginning she's going through trailer park and you hear this kind of like. 
swamp rock, you know, just this this uh, kind of like backwoods, like country, you know, electric guitar kind of thing. And then it's like literally a guy just up on top of a trailer playing it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I was like, that was just, whenever you have that well, kind of... Well, they did the, what's a something about Mary type thing where he would oh, yeah. come in and just kind of be like the narrator. At the same, at the same time, he's also playing a, a part in the film as well. Yeah. And I loved when he... At first, I was like, "Okay, yeah, there's there's the you know the the, the southern fried rock guitar guy just uh-huh. kind of playing his guitar and got his shtick." It wasn't until he was zombified that it was just so good. Yeah, like he yeah. just went all out with it. Totally, uh, and that was so satisfying. But one thing that we missed is kind of the setup with the uh, the the teenage group, why they were in a short bus that was painted white. And it, what was it? Trinity, vert, 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 vertical, vertical Trinity, Trinity. Ver, vertical Trinity, like Christian, blah 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 blah. Yeah, they basically. It seems like they. So it's like the troubled youth take are them being up into the mountains, out in the mountains to have an experience and get to know God, and they get into a, an accident. But they set up each and every single individual character who had their own. I guess you could say that you know they're the the, the horror tropes of stereotype. The stereotype mm-hmm. that you know right. this person is a drug addict. Yeah. Uh, this person is a sex addict. Yeah. This person's just a raging asshole, which I I you know th- I didn't feel anything for him when he was being skinned. Spoiler alert. Yeah, yeah, sure. It's like I had no sympathy for the guy. Yeah. Like, do your fucking worst to that piece of crap because right. he was just. And then you of had course, the, yeah, he was an asshole. You had the uh, the. The, the homosexual guy. I don't even know if he was, um, honestly. I think that the guy was just, was just, or like, just yeah. messing just, with him and, like, making fun of him by saying he was. He was the gay computer guy. Right, but, yeah. But not that he's actually using any gay computer for computers. skills in this movie. Right, right, Maybe yeah. he is gay for computers. Right, that's very possible. Yeah. Uh, but, yeah, I mean, that guy also, you know, there's always that that morality of a horror movie because like he he gets it too but then you know because like there's the point there's the point where it's like the one girl is like you know asking for him for help and then like the one of the zombies comes out and he just like throws her down that's good you know so then it's like yeah okay so yeah he's dead he's gonna he's actually played throughout the movie as like the most moral of the group of kids Mm mm-hmm and you think that he could potentially be a survivor other than the fact that we're watching a horror film and yeah. we, we know only the woman's yeah we, yeah we called the final girl yeah, right. yeah. but um yeah there's this point where he he grabs her and just throws her right in front of one of the well that's that's that when you knew away. it was it was over for him but it was beautiful yeah it was because it, it was it wasn't it just, set up for that to happen no not at all and that's what the same yeah. one of those same things that happened in spellcaster where you're just like what right I mean, it wasn't like stand up and cheer, but and it, the zombies don't even kill him. No, yeah, true. the yeah. final girl kills him. Yeah, without even realizing it, probably right by yeah. running running him over with the car. Yeah, because <laughs> he's locked it, in a cage. It's fantastic. Yeah. I mean, yeah. you know, yeah. Geez, oh gosh. <laughs> um, I do want to cut. So uh, Norma is played by Nicole Hiltz, and I thought she did a really good job. Yeah. So she's kind of like the main girl who I do like that whole beginning. Uh, it reminded me of something like, you know, a film that I think doesn't ever get much respect, but I actually think is one of the best in the series, which unfortunately doesn't say much, but that uh, Friday the 13th remake. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, like, I'm not a big fan of the Friday the 13th series. I think it's just mostly terrible movies that, you know, have a you know Jason in it. Um, but that one does the same thing where it's like it starts off and you've got this whole group of people and you think this is the movie and you think these are the characters and then before the opening credits they all end up getting killed right. and then it turns out to be you know it's a late title card and ends up to be you know a whole different group of people right so that's kind of the same thing i didn't know anything about this going in i didn't either so you know i think that that norma's the main girl and this is going to be her story and right. everything you know so I thought that was a, a kind of cool. Well, that's aspect. what I'm saying is the yeah. setup, and even when the 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 church group runs into her, you know, walks into her trailer, and then she accepts them in, and and the power goes out because there's a storm, and she says, "Well, let's tell some scary stories." And there, where we thought this may be an anthology, mm-hmm. they start telling the story, and it starts going to this completely other place, right? And, telling the story and i'm like okay well maybe this is like some sort of weird backward anthology because we saw one short story at the beginning it had a beginning a middle and end and you're like okay well that's it right and then when you revisit her again like you said that's like the tales from the crypt sort of thing where she's like the crypt 
gatekeeper, like, let's let's tell some more stories now. Yeah. So it all makes sense that if this was a graphic novel or if it was part of a, you know, comic book series or whatever. Um, but then it just, it, it was a way only to explain a little bit more of the backstory on Norma's character and then to see where he was going to go from there. And it, it, it took it, like, further mm-hmm. into its own thing. So that's where I give it a lot of credit for giving exposition and backstory without it feeling like it was uh, forcibly uh, just included. not even just forcibly, but I mean it could have been. It could have felt really forced, but it also could have felt extremely linear. You know, they could have done it in a very traditional way. I've not seen anything like that where exposition was so fleshed out yeah. in the way that it was. It, it, and it sets up more of a sympathetic background for Norma, mm-hmm. even though she's still incredibly repellent to everybody <laughs> yeah. else throughout the the remainder of the movie. Yeah, right. Uh, until the very end. Uh, but even then, I mean, it's it's like, did it need to end that way or did right. it not? I mean, it, not really. And there was some, and some of the imbalance that I had with it is uh, what I was saying earlier is I don't know uh, really the motivation of the devil to keep them kind of like in this like limbo of killing people. I didn't know what that, because she made a deal with him to say, Oh, you can get your revenge. Here's, here's the gun. You know, we have a deal and you know, you can go back and you can take all these guys out. Hell of a gun too. Yeah. Probably not very interesting. I mean, it's a really cool looking gun. Nuts. I don't even know. I I was trying to figure out like what, even is this gun right. looks like a musket but also has like a magazine a magazine it. on it yeah, yeah. <laughs> but i don't know what i missed did i miss something where what is the purpose absolutely of her being stuck in the trailer park yeah no i didn't i didn't get killed. that either other than just the general you know it's the devil's curse of doing a deal with the devil there's mm. always a catch but we never i mean it's not like another even a Tales from the Crypt episode would be like, well, here's the contract that you must sign in blood, you know, or, or whatever. We don't see any of that. Mm-hmm. Well, I was fine without that, but I don't even deal. know. I don't, I don't know right. what the, what the really the trade off was for, cause now she was stuck with them. It's like, Oh, well, I mean, just unless you take it for the blanket statement of you can go back and you can eradicate these awful people. Right. But now you're stuck with them forever. Right. Is it just because like, that's like an, like, pretty much like the ultimate sin is murder mm-hmm. uh and that's what she did is she murdered all these people and well, now that, she's kind of stuck with them in kind of like you know a purgatory of her own and that I, I, that could have been fleshed out because ultimately she was you know she was basically not happy with them right she was fighting with them she was she was like their enemy but then they're all working together in right. the afterlife other than the fact that she's kind of seems like she's their leader they have to obey her so that might be kind of something yeah. is that you know yeah, they all she's die she's running the show right. right now for sure but she like controls them in some way um so yeah and clearly it can only operate at night because they're all concerned about their timeline you know, <laughs> of, the sun, of the sun coming up right right mm-hmm. gotcha yeah that just need to be fleshed out just a little yeah. bit more mm-hmm. yeah 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 you know, instead of just saying, okay, now here's where we're going to race to the end and we're going to pick off one person, you know, with each individual trailer park redneck zombie. Right. Yeah, you know, throughout the whole thing. Yeah, the structure, I agree, the structure was very interesting, though. Because this could have yeah. been just a rote slasher mm-hmm. and, you know, we find out through somebody at the gas station about this terrible thing that happened and they go there and they're all zombies already you know, so I like, think that by doing stuff like that, by having like the story that tells the flashback, um, yeah, I just like the the structure was interesting. It set itself apart. Surprised I never heard of this movie. What pleased me about that kind of beginning of the movie mm-hmm. is that they go to the truck stop slash convenience store. They're buying stuff, and that is the time in any other movie that they would be like, "All right, you're not going down by that burnt out trailer <laughs> right. park, are you?" You know. Right. You're, don't turn a left on this yeah. road at yeah. night. None of that. None of that. They yeah. just keep they just move move on with life. Like they're living their their 
Yeah, all, the, all all its setup was is just to get to know the the Bible kids. Yeah, exactly. Right. You know, they each got to expose their personalities and kind of where they they would be headed. And see that most of them are you know assholes. Some of them are beheaded. Right. Sure. <laughs> Very good point. And that you know that there's the one girl kind of is actually being nice and trying to help people, so you know she's going to be the final girl. Mm-hmm. So yeah, it's definitely established in that kind of way. Um, but yeah, definitely. Uh, there was I want to call out the uh, the 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 big lady who's like the I smell meat, I want my meat. <laughs> you know, she's a good creation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I really liked her because even when she wasn't a zombie, she was fucking horrifying. She, she, yeah, she. Um, but yeah, that was. But she was. Fun. They were all so much fun. They were having yeah. a lot of fun once they actually you know became. Yeah, the these zombies. Yeah, and they had like the, the you know the guitar zombie gets all blown up. By one of his Can't claymores. believe I blew up by my own goddamn claymore. <laughs> Watch yeah. out for those claymores. Exactly. And Come then, back like, and put me together. The other guy's like, yeah, he's, he's trying to put them together guns, with duct tape. Guns, duct yeah. tape. And he's like, he's like, duct tape always works. Duct tape doesn't always work. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like, yeah, there's some fun stuff in there. And then, yeah, exactly. As far as those uh, one-liners, the I think the one that I think we all laughed the most at was, uh, was like, you're going to make my South rise again. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um yeah <laughs> by a particularly aroused zombie yeah exactly yeah. um yeah no i actually i really agree with what you said earlier though sean i think that if they would have pulled back a little bit on the i don't know the mean spirited stuff and just like the just the ultra gore and like the stuff about the you know, like filming the two people, even though right. they were assholes, it's like it went to a level that I don't think really kept up with the spirit of the rest of the movie. Yeah. No, no, not at all. Well, and and it, when you were saying that too, it all like we did say Texas Chainsaw Massacre too. When they have the scene uh, with um, uh, Mojo Nixon, and and he just takes a hammer and he just keeps bashing him in the head. Right. Even though it's so shocking because he, that hammer just keeps swinging and the blood just in mm-hmm. the, the close ups and everything, it's still funny and right. fits with the tone of the rest of right. the film. Right. In this, when they're showing these these gore pieces, like I said, very well done, and you're, you're skinning somebody and taking little pieces off and then, you know, like ripping the skin off and going underneath. Uh, and then, you know, the denouement of, you know, uh, frying them like a turkey. Because um, <laughs> everything's better fried. That's, that's better right. Everything tastes better. <laughs> but when you, when you start going from whimsical one-liners to uh, maybe five to ten seconds too long of something mm-hmm. that is actually really horrific. Like, I felt that. I mean, that's, I mean yeah. it, it, it was really well done. Um, well, I felt part of it but then there was just parts that were just stupid in the same sequence like so he's skinning him and then he pierces his chest with like a salt gun no he's he, basting him yeah he's basting him yeah for the okay, so it's like it's with italian dressing like yeah right. okay, which which right. it's All funny because right. you know like established earlier yeah exactly because the, the, the on the, the, the back of the truck they had italian dressing right. and that was chekhov's dressing <laughs> let's talk about that truck for a second Uh uh-huh so there's a a, a flashback sequence where they're clearly stealing the contents of a truck right this is the weirdest delivery truck of all time yeah you're right it's got boxes of italian dressing Mm -hmm. it's got hand grenades Mm -hmm. and it's got some other stuff on there claymores yeah yeah yeah. and then they're like (laughs) you're paying me to rob me you know, right. There's like an arrangement with this delivery truck Because it's driver. not like he acquired all this stuff and brought it to him like you would smuggle something into prison. Right. Like, it's yeah. a situation like, hey, you're uh, these are part of my delivery and you're robbing me. So, yeah, what the, what the truck? Exactly. <laughs> what the truck? <laughs> there's no rhyme or reason for all these things <laughs> to be on, to, on the back of one ill-packaged yeah. big rig. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And... I just imagine, like, the scenario playing out where they let that guy go. Mm -hmm. Like, okay, you got robbed. Tell him you got robbed. Right. So he goes back to his boss, and he's like, yeah, sorry, I got robbed. Uh, I'm 
I lost all the Italian dressing and the the. the <laughs> what grenades. about the hand grenades? They just held me up, and that's all they took was the <laughs> hand grenades <laughs> and the uh, Italian dressing. Right, right, yeah. <laughs> what do they do? Do they dock your pay in that situation? I mean, I it's know. such a strange. Oh, they concept. got the hand grenades, boss. What about the Italian dressing? Yeah, they got that too. <laughs> Heads are gonna roll for this. <laughs> Um, uh, I do like the, um, you had the, the Asian massage lady. Yes. Who, when she was a zombie, it was around like a, like a China doll mask mm-hmm. kind of a thing. And, um, she, uh, you know, when she does the whole thing where basically the guy's on the massage table and she's like doing the thing where she's walking on his back and then she like basically just starts crushing his back and everything. And then he's still alive. And then she, like, turns him over, starts crushing him some more, and he's, like, you know, spurting blood. He's barely alive. And she's like, you want happy ending? Yeah. <laughs> I was like, that's a good, that's that's a good little slasher line. And like, just keeps, no happy no, ending. Well, she's trying to right. jerk him off. Yeah, but, yeah, um, yeah, yeah, exactly. And then she just rips the whole thing off, which thankfully yeah. they don't show all that. Right. They could have gone a little further on that. I'm glad they did. <laughs> I was expecting a rip-off and then a shove in the mouth. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Right. Yeah, because that's kind of what this movie was. But, yeah, I definitely am glad they showed a little bit of restraint there, for sure. <laughs> um, but, yeah, very interesting characters. Mm-hmm. And and I liked... There was little aspects as well that I really liked. Like So, in the very beginning, when you had... Um, you know, basically, you have Norma, and she's got some guy who's coming to pick her up for a dance. And that's kind of the catalyst for everything that happens because this guy's coming in like all these redneck assholes who live in the trailer park with her just harassing her and harassing the guy and just being a total shit to them. And then ultimately they end up getting in a scuffle, some things happen, and then that guy end up gets up getting accidentally killed and paled on like this fence. And she's just, like, super upset. And I feel in a piece of really good acting on her part, by the way. Like, she was, I think, very solid throughout the film. And that was, like, really, really good acting. Especially for a movie of this caliber, you don't expect acting of that level. Mm -hmm. Um, I was like, hey, she's actually pretty darn good. But I really like how, like, the other guys were like, I'm sorry. You know, like, we didn't mean that to go this far. And there was, like, this real moment of, like, humanity and connection from them um, where they weren't just monsters. You know, it's like, yeah, they're complete fucking monsters in that moment. But they didn't really intend to kill the guy. Right. They pushed it too far. And you felt that from them. It's like, well, damn, you know, we didn't mean to do that. You know? Um, and I really like that this film decided to linger on a moment like that. You mm-hmm. know? Um, so, again, there's like, these little glints of these things that... Um, you know, I think are interesting. It, a, a shame, I, you know, this filmmaker doesn't seem to have done anything of any real substance since this. Um, so, you know, it would have been nice to have seen, you know, them get some... Because I think with more practice and maybe more budget, um, we could have seen something interesting from this mm. filmmaker. Yeah, he pulled all his favorites on this one, or uh, all his favors on yeah. this one, yeah, yeah, just yeah. to get it done, I'm, I'm assuming. So. Yeah, it's got Trace Adkins in it, basically playing the, the devil. devil. Yeah. yeah, Yeah, he's a big dude. Yeah, yeah, he is. But yeah, well spotted because you're like, is that a country singer guy? Well, because I think I've seen him. Like, uh, you know, I think he was in town not too long ago. Oh, okay. Or maybe he does commercials for something. I mean, he's 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 very recognizable, mm-hmm. right? Because he's always got that black cowboy hat, leather black cowboy hat. And, yeah. And the beard has always been the same. And he's, he's always had the long hair. He, he's he only gigantic. needed to be in town for a day to do this. Right. Movie. Yeah. Oh, sure. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. yeah. Good point. And you can put him on the poster, and right. you're like, you know, we got Trace Adkins. Yeah, and Priscilla um, Barnes, same thing. She's yeah. probably there for like a day. Um, and then what's his face, Tracy? Uh, Tracy Walter. Yeah, Tracy yeah, yeah, Walter. Yeah, yeah. Bob yeah. Gunn. Yeah, exactly. also only for one one scene. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, he was sure. he was in the cafe truck stop. Yeah, that's and true. then he was oh, at the end. That's right. Yeah, that's yeah. right. I totally missed. But he was wearing that. exactly the same thing right. in mm-hmm. both scenes. So, yeah. so sure. Well, it's, it's only the next day. day. I mean, yeah. or the next morning. I mean, he could have. Good point. He was at the yeah. truck stop you know, all night long, drinking yeah. coffee, and eating pie. Mm-hmm. Good movie. Yeah. Good. Yeah, this was good. I liked it. Yeah, totally. As absolutely like, if this was something that I were to have caught on, like Joe Bob Briggs, you know, or something like that, yeah. I'd be like, hell yeah. yeah, you know, this is a totally good watch. Um, definitely good for around Halloween. I mean, I'm sure by the time this comes out, it's gonna be after Halloween, but you know, right now. Spoiler alert, it is around Halloween, so it's a fantastic uh, one for this time of year. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I would definitely see, if, you know, if you're doing your 31 days of Halloween, you could absolutely do worse with sliding this in. Do you know if this is available anywhere other than on DVD by chance? I think that's... Well, no, 
Maybe. I don't know. It's got to be on, like, digital or something. Perhaps. I'm just curious if it's on Amazon. Well, anyway, look it up. Well, this this was, like, a half-price books thing. Yeah, yeah, And it just kind of popped up. Right. Um, but no, I'm glad we watched this. I, I liked it. It's definitely... I think that it, it this is a movie that should be seen more. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm surprised I'd never even heard of this movie. I'm, I'm shocked that I never saw it. I mean, especially when this movie came out was the floodgates of the direct-to-DVD market yeah. you know, period of time. Mm-hmm. So I'm surprised that this didn't rise to the top of that, at least in the circles that I Totally. Was. Yeah, I mean, I would say if you're a fan of... You know, I would say, like, if you're a fan of things like Creep Show and that kind of stuff, you'd definitely dig this. But mm-hmm. specifically, if you're, like, a really big fan of that kind of, like, late 2000s, you know, again, like, kind of Hills Have Eyes, Texas Chainsaw Massacre uh, remake, um, you know, again, like you brought up Wrong Turn. Or, um... 2000 Maniacs, which they actually referenced oh, yeah. right in the beginning of the movie. Sure. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, they made a lot of good references mm-hmm. in this. I mean, that, that was one thing that it was, this was something, because, yeah, they have in the beginning, they're watching this kind of show, which is almost kind of like a Joe Bob Briggs kind of thing, where they're obviously watching movies, and it's called, and you know, how, Trailer yeah. Park of Terror. How clever to show the title of the movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Through, like, a TV, a TV show. show. Yeah. yeah, exactly. So there was some good references kind mm-hmm. of just tossed in little by little in this. So, yeah, definitely worth a watch. I enjoyed yeah. it. Good, yeah, because good if, if they wanted to do, like, a, a follow-up movie, mm-hmm. whether it revolved around this particular trailer park or not, right? you could still use those guys mm-hmm. to intro it. Exactly. He, they would be the Crypt Creeper role. Right, you know, yeah, yeah. Cultfollowing.co. Yeah. Yep. Check us out on uh, the YouTubes. If you're listening to this on audio and you're wondering what those sound effects are, check us out on YouTube. It'll all make sense. Bye. Bye.